days in jail. Joining me now, Saul Weisenberg, former deputy independent counsel, Fox News contributor, and from outside the courtroom, Mike Davis, former Gorsuch law clerk and founder of the Article 3 Project. Mike, what would you say to Trump if you were his lawyer in this situation? Well, this is clearly an illegal, unconstitutional gag order here. We have gag orders to protect criminal defendants who are going through the process. It is a limited uh, time, place, and manner restriction to protect criminal defendants and their constitutional rights. And for these Democrat prosecutors and these Democrat judges to put a gag order on a criminal defendant is truly un-American, is breathtaking. President Trump, if, if there's anyone on the planet who must have the constitutional right to speak out about the judge, the prosecutor, the staff, the witnesses, the bias, it has to be a criminal defendant going through a criminal process. Now, Saul, it seems to me that a lot of Americans are, they hear about jury selection and they, they, they watch stuff on TV, but they don't really know what happens during jury selection. At some point, the president was unhappy with one of the jurors, perhaps one that was selected. Um, but what are one of the permissible, what are the permissible grounds and impermissible grounds uh, for striking jurors? Well, both sides have strikes for cause, which means that the potential juror, they believe, uh, cannot be fair and impartial, and those are unlimited. And then each side has peremptory strikes where you can strike them for any reason you want except for uh, constitutionally improper reason like racial animus or religious animus or something like that. So that's what they're going through. They're questioning them individually after a big chunk of the jurors, before they even started, potential jurors, before they even started individual questioning, self-identified as being unable to be fair and impartial. All right, one uh, dismissed juror joined MSNBC today, glad that was juror was dismissed, and um, talked about her experience. It was odd. Uh, it, it was such an interesting experience because it's, I had never seen him in person before. You see someone blown up so larger than life on the media. To see them in person is very jarring. Um, and you get the sense that it's like, oh, this is just another guy. And also he sees me talking about him, which is bizarre. Mike, uh, do you think the attorneys are going to have a hard time with the jury that they're selecting? So let's see, we have the Soros-funded Manhattan DA who campaigned on getting Trump. We have Biden's former number three in the Biden Justice Department, Matthew Colangelo. We have this Democrat judge who donated to Biden in another anti-Trump cause and his daughter's raising money off of this trial. And then you have a Manhattan jury pool that's 85% against Trump. So, I, yeah, I don't think Trump's going to get a fair trial. Uh, so, when I'm thinking about how this is all going to go down, and the president goes out and speaks his mind about the fact that he believes he cannot get a fair trial, he is being threatened with jail time for that. What, how Judge Merchan will handle this, we'll see. But from some of his comments, it looks like he's not going to tolerate much of this. Where is this ultimately, in your mind, going to end up? Because it seems like the president's, like, daring them to hold him in contempt. Well, one of the problems here is, is that uh, there's some case law suggesting that even if a judicial order is unconstitutional, and I agree with Mike, this gag order is clearly overbroad, and violates the First Amendment. But there's some case law indicating that because it's a judicial order, you still can't violate it. So I'm concerned about that. Uh, that, could be, uh, the, that could be one of the things that gets litigated here. I think the other thing to look at is the fines, apparently, for contempt are very low. They're about $1,000 per contempt. So you're going to face a situation where Judge Merchan may, may feel like he needs, to, uh, he needs to think about imposing a sentence, but I don't think that's, that's going to happen. It's, a real, it's, it's, it's really terrible, this order, I believe, because I think it, it impinges on Trump's core First Amendment rights to comment about the case. No, he can't intimidate a juror. He can't do anything to do that or right. intimidate a witness. But the idea, the idea that Michael Cohen, 
uh, can be out there talking <laughs> yeah. about the case on TV and that former President Trump can't comment about it when his liberty at stake, uh, to me, is a classic First Amendment problem. Yeah, where's the ACLU? Are they saying anything about this? Saul and Mike, thank you both.